Hello, this is Joel. We've got another exciting episode of Engineering Roundtable for you. This week, we're going to delve into a spooky Halloween project that I've been working on for quite a while. Here we have the Arduigi, a Arduino-controlled Ouija board. I thought of this many, many years ago when I first saw Paranormal Activity, the movie. In it, they had a Ouija board begin moving on its own after they had left the room and then catch a flame. And I remember thinking to myself, I could move a Ouija board on my own and probably make it do some cool things while I'm at it. The end goal idea was to have a Ouija board that I could text a word to and have it spell it out. So once I had the idea, I set out with a few specific goals in mind. I wanted to make it mostly out of wood, which is cheap and easily available to me. I wanted to make it affordable and not use any custom parts, mostly stuff that I could find at my local hardware store or laying around the office. This was really my first big mechanical project that I had ever embarked upon and I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I figured that creating the moving parts would be relatively easy while dealing with all the code and mapping out letters would be the hard part. As it turns out, building an XY gantry is a lot harder than I had originally imagined and turned it into a project in and of itself. So for this week's project, I'm gonna run you through the process that I followed in building this XY gantry and show you some of the things that I would have changed and some of the things that I would keep the same. Here we can see the Arduigi in action. We have the XY gantry underneath with some magnets on it moving the planchette around, which also has magnets on it. So it was around this time last year that I began to embark upon building the Arduigi. I went to my local hardware store and looked around for some parts that I thought would work well. First thing I needed was a, was a threaded rod to help drive the whole system. I found some Acme rod that doesn't look very dissimilar to this. The only other XY gantries I had seen were the ones in, say, our pick-and-place machine, and they use similar threaded rod. I also found some nice steel rod that was smooth and some hollow acrylic tubing that fit over it nicely to act as uh, guide rods. So when I brought all the pieces home, the first issue I ran into was how am I gonna couple this larger diameter threaded rod to the smaller diameter shaft of the motor? So I sought out a friend's help who owned a mill, and we decided to mill out a little piece from a uh, from another piece of acrylic tubing. So once we milled our piece for coupling, I built the system. And the first system looked kind of like this, with the threaded rod on one side and the smooth rod on the other. I figured that the threaded rod would have enough torque to move the, the whole platform without needing a guide rod on the other side. However, I soon found out that the system was very prone to binding, not only because of the unevenness of the lead screw, but also because the acrylic coupling did not offer very much play and soon they begin to crack after too much force was applied. So after admitting defeat with the coupler I set aside the project for quite some time. I then spent the past year studying every sort of moving XY gantry that I came across be it in a pick and place machine, a 3D printer, or even a CNC or mill. I then changed my design to offer the guide rod on the other side and I stepped down the size of the threaded rod I used to match the shaft of the motor a little more closely. As you can see, I've got two rods on either end and our threaded rod in the middle. Underneath these bases, we have some plastic acrylic tubing to allow for a smooth guide. As I mentioned before, the first iteration of the project used a milled coupler. This didn't last very long as it was made out of acrylic and any sort of off-centeredness made it crack. I tried many other couplers such as a 3D printed version, heat shrink, and rubber tubing. In the end, I ended up harvesting a coupler from one of the encoders that we sell. The diameter was not quite right, but I was able to mill the hole the right size. However, even with a nice coupler, my system still wasn't as precise as I wanted it to be. With everything tightened together and glued on, I found that there was no room for play, and things didn't want to move as smoothly as possible because they would bind up. So in order to get everything to move without having to be super precise, I took one of the lead screws that was on here and glued a nail on top of it and then trimmed it off. I then milled this little channel in the middle, and as you can see, it does a good job of guiding the base while still not needing to be super precise. The same goes for the y-axis here. I added bearings in the wood opposite of the motors to allow the threaded rod to move freely. I had originally nutted them to the bearings, but found that they moved better and provided less binding without the nuts. The next step was the electronics. For starters, we used a stepper motor for several reasons. I could have achieved the same results with, say, a drill motor or any other powerful DC motor. But with stepper motors, you get precision. And in any device where you need to know the position of the thing you're moving, it's good to have some sort of feedback. Stepper motors provide that feedback by allowing you to step 
a certain number of steps in one direction or the other. To drive the motors, I used the SparkFun Easy Driver Stepper Motor Driver. I had already used this in several projects and was familiar with it. Plus, it's easy to use and requires very few connections to the Arduino. Both the motors and the drivers run off of 12 volts, and so I have 12 volts coming into the Arduino, powering it at the proper 5 volts, and then going to the motor drivers with the 12 volts. And last, for a temporary control mechanism, I decided to use a Wii Chuck. Again, I had used this in previous projects and already knew my way around it and its code. The Wii Chuck speaks I squared C and allows users to get data from both the joystick, the buttons, and the accelerometer inside. Here I'm just using the joystick and sampling it every so often to see if there's been a move in the X or Y axis. One of the last things that I needed to do was figure out how to get the wires from this motor over to my electronics without them getting in the way. I had seen many wire tracks on machines such as pick and place machines or 3D printers that allowed the wires to move in sort of a tank track fashion along with the base. I figured cardboard would be a cheap alternative to this. As you can see, it does a pretty good job of keeping the wires out of the way while the gantry moves back and forth. Using some very powerful magnets that I harvested from some hard drives, I glued them to the uppermost platform in the shape of the planchette. I then found and milled some legs to hold the Ouija board temporarily. Ultimately, I would like to put this in a finished enclosure, but for now, this works. So now that you've seen the process and some of the problems that I ran into, here are some of the things that I would have done differently. First, if you're looking for more precision, I wouldn't recommend using wood. Although it was cheap and easy to work with, I had a hard time lining everything up and getting everything exactly precise. Next, I would have gone with different motors, perhaps more powerful ones. The ones I use work, but they tend to get caught up. If I were to have completely redesigned this whole system from scratch, I would have gone with belts and pulleys and gears rather than threaded rods and nuts. Although the nuts and rod work well, the pulleys would have been a lot easier to implement. They don't require as much precision and they're a lot easier to set up. With my project, I wanted a nice small compact device that I could easily, say, hide under a table or just leave on top of a table. And as you can see, the area is much larger than the Ouija board itself. So I would have started with a smaller area to begin with, and that would have made working around it much easier. One of the first improvements I would like to make is put a Z-axis on here so that the planchette can move left and right, making it appear more fluid in its movement. One of the next things I would improve is adding a hard stop interrupt to keep the bases from crashing into the posts. This can be accomplished with a momentary switch or a photo interrupt to let the Arduino know when the base has actually reached its maximum position. The next thing that I need to add is position recognition so that the Arduino knows where the base is in position to the board. This can be accomplished with rotary encoders on the end of the threaded rods that count revolutions or can be done with different motor drivers that can count the steps thus making it easier to follow the position of whatever you're tracking. And lastly, the possibilities for this are endless. It is essentially an output device that can communicate data to any human being from any source. As I mentioned earlier, I would like to put a cellular module in this and have it spell out words that are texted to it. But you could do anything with it. Hook it up to the internet, have it pull RSS feeds from your favorite website, or whatever else you can think of. So that about wraps it up for this week. Thanks for watching another episode of Engineering Roundtable. I hope you enjoyed my spooky Halloween project. And if any of you out there would like to build your own, I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.